Welcome to today's episode of the Strong for Life podcast. I love doing these client interviews and getting them to share more about their experience in my online program, the Strong for Life Blueprint. And if you are someone who wants to learn how to get strong, lean, and pain-free without wasting hours at the gym each week, and you want to learn more about how my online coaching program works, feel free to click the link in the about section of this podcast, or you can also go to the link and website connorosheafitness.com. Okay, guys, super excited to share today's guest. So it's my client, Charles. Myself and Charles have been working together for three over three months now almost four months now and he's gotten some awesome results in the program to date so just wanted to have him on to chat and to just talk a bit more about his results and how he's found the program so far so first of all charles thanks for taking time out of your morning mate oh thanks it's great to be with you awesome so before we kind of jump into your experience so far let's talk about uh, well first of all like you know can you tell me a bit more about yourself where you're based in the world how old you are what you do day to day Sure. Uh, I'm Charles Quintus. I'm 55 years old, uh, east coast of the U.S., uh, living in Connecticut. Um, I'm a diabetic, uh, type 2. So uh, so this has been very exciting for me to learn, learn a lot of this stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm a manager. I'm a shipping manager in a pasta manufacturing company. So I'm at a desk uh, a lot of my day. Yeah. Yeah. Got you, mate. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about like where you were at before coming into the program. Maybe paint a picture for people. Yeah, so uh, I've got uh, chronic back pain, chronic shoulder injuries. Uh, I was really tied up in a cycle of uh, I get very motivated, start a hardcore workout, um, end up just kind of exacerbating my injuries and then get frustrated with it. And then, you know, get depressed, stop, and I wouldn't do anything for months. And then I'd get, do the same thing, get excited about getting back in shape, hit it really hard, re-injure myself, and then do that again and again. So just kind of over the course of time, you know, my chronic injuries just got, you know, slowly worse and my mobility got slowly worse and, you know, there I was. (laughs) Same kind of thing with diets as well. Um, you know, when I, when I first got diabetes, like 13, 14 years ago, you know, I had to reevaluate what I was eating and how I was handling that. And then, and I fell into the same kind of cycle of big restrictions, um, trying to really focus down and eliminate a lot of stuff out of my diet. And anytime I would have a failure, it would be, you know, oh, that's the end of the world. And then, I, you know, try to get back on it. So it's been tough just trying to establish the right habits. Yeah, for sure. And like, how, how long was that cycle going on for? Long time. I, I mean, really, probably since my mid 30s. You know, last 20 years has just been a cycle of trying to act like I'm 20 and it not working out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy you, you made that point because it's a really common trap to get into. Like, you you know life happens and you just kind of get out of a cycle and then all of a sudden you you've got aches and pains or you've gained unwanted weight and you're like i've just yeah. wasted two years or six months or three months so i better make up for all that last time so i'm gonna train six days a week i'm gonna restrict my calories i'm gonna get shredded and strong and as you yeah. said then you your body starts breaking down then you take time off and then you just keep repeating yeah. that cycle yeah okay yeah. so like let's kind of fast forward so basically you joined the program after this cycle going on for 20 years you're saying yeah. and then what like maybe maybe talk about at what point of the program were you like okay this is different like it's probably slower <laughs> um were yeah. there any kind of aha moments or things started clicking for you and if if so it would love to hear you talk about that it, yeah uh, it was probably just a couple of weeks in um you know, I just, I try to keep realistic expectations. I mean, I knew that, that, you know, a, a quick fix type program was not going to work. Right. And so, you know, I didn't really have a good strong concept of what a long-term, you know, healthy program was going to look like. So, um, you know, I did feel like it started very slow because that's, you know, I had never 
done it right before. And I think it was a couple of weeks in when I was doing, you know, my first set of, of programs. And I could tell, uh, just, I felt like I hadn't done a lot, but I could tell that my movements were already, you know, deeper, they were easier. And I thought, you know, it's work. It doesn't feel like I'm trying that hard, but it's working. Yeah. So that that moment, I think I was doing a I was doing a Spider Man lunge, right? And and I'm like, this feels really easy. And I remembered like just a week ago, this was hard. This was hard to do. And I thought, this that's amazing. This is exactly what I was looking for. It didn't hurt. I didn't have to beat myself up over. I didn't feel like I was, you know, breaking into a big sweat to make stuff happen. And uh, I, I was so happy, you know, that in that moment. I remember it. I remember stepping out. I'm like, I'm going to do a million of these. But, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. But crazy. Yeah. I literally had a conversation with, with uh, another client this morning about that. And she was saying something very similar. She was kind of like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's easy. Like, it, should, it shouldn't be yeah. easy. Yeah. You kind of actually have to, it's, it's hard to go through that without a coach because you would probably stop or you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't, because it, it should be painful. Like, that's what we're being told by the fitness industry. Right. You need to suffer and you need to, you know, push past your limits all the time. So then if it's easier and you're getting results, it's kind of confusing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. So yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of the, you know, my biggest weakness was the opposite of that, right? And I, and, and that's the thing that I had to struggle with, even with, you know, as soon as I feel like success, I'm like, oh, I have to do more. I have to go harder. This is working. And so that's been constantly my, my thing is to have to step back and say, it's all good. Keep doing what you're doing because you don't, you don't need results tomorrow. You need results forever. And it's yeah. a, that's a big shift in my mindset. It's big. That's huge, mate. That's like, that's a quote right there. I don't need results tomorrow. I need them for a lifetime. I love that. Yeah. Um, let's talk about even we'll just kind of rewind a bit like when you were maybe thinking about the program or maybe we were talking like what were you skeptical about because it's an online program you've tried a lot of things in 20 years so yeah. what type of things were you maybe a bit worried about or unsure of the biggest thing I was worried about is that um, is that I would get a program that I couldn't do or that I couldn't stick with that you know, if I if I either couldn't develop the habits fast enough or couldn't follow the program 100, percent that it just wasn't going to work. Um, you know that it wouldn't be tailored for me, um, and that it wouldn't have like the kind of support system again that would work for me, be tailored for me, um, or something that would be you know sort of a prepackaged. Here's your thing, and then it wouldn't adjust to me as I kind of went along. That was my big skepticism was, is it going to be tailored and is it going to change as I change? And um, so that was the you know, kind of thing as I went along, like, is this, how's it going to feel for me? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes if you're following something and you might, you might be okay at the start, but then if you start falling behind and there's no way of adjusting it, you can just feel like you're failing and then it's very easy to opt out, yeah? Or yeah, you yeah. get an injury or something like that happens. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, I've, I've certainly done other programs and said, here's the movement, this is what you have to do. And, you know, if, if I had a, you know, I had restrictions with my shoulder movement, with my back. And so if I couldn't do that full movement, I didn't really have anything to fall back on. And which has been very great about this program is that, you know, I'm learning the basic movements before I learn the next movement that's, you know, built on that foundation. So I'm not jumping right to the end, you know, not doing handstands week one, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's been a big fail for me in other programs is that I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the end result in the beginning and I don't have the foundational skills yet. And so, you know, I'm failing or getting injured trying to do the final form. You know, so that was, I was afraid of that because I've done that before. And this is yeah. fantastic. In that regard. Yeah, that's great, mate. And it's a really good point, like just having that base, that foundation built and, and kind of going up the steps of the ladder versus trying to like, you know, jump to ladder 
uh, step 10 and then missing yeah. and falling and slipping and, and hurting yourself. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some results. So like, yeah, what would yeah. you say now, you know, at this point in, let's just say four months in, like what sort of things do you, have you achieved or you're proud of having achieved so far? Man, I feel like I've had a lot of breakthroughs. Um, I think the probably the, you know, the most basic one is just identifying bad habits and actually being able to replace them with better habits. Because I could identify the bad habits before. Um, but, you know, I would just get caught up in, you know, here I'm doing the wrong thing that makes me a terrible person, whatever. As opposed to, let's figure out what I should be doing instead of that. And actually mindfully plugging something in that works and then being able to hold myself accountable to it in a way that doesn't feel bad. Mm. Right. Um, that's probably the, big, the biggest breakthrough. But I mean, in and among that, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of good habits started. But probably the, the thing I go back to again and again is the, uh, the mindset lessons mm -hmm. they're the biggest i mean it sounds silly but my favorite thing is is embrace the suck yeah <laughs> Absolutely favorite thing. can you so, explain that for people listening <laughs> yeah so the idea that i'm not supposed to be perfect at something when i started and you know there's for me the the success is showing up uh, because i'm constantly learning new things and i'm constantly um, having to fight against, you know, my self criticism, say you're not very good at that, but um, you know it's a win if I show up and I do it and I get through it. And you know maybe today is not a ten, maybe today's today's a six, but if I show up and I do it, that's going to get me to the next one. It's going to get me to the next one. It's going to get me to the next one. And that's where that's where the gains really are. So uh, that's been tough for me, but. I really felt those the mindset lessons, and I and I keep going back to them. I have you know great notes on them. I keep going back to them. I've read yeah. uh, I've read a couple of books now. Uh, Which ones? So, uh, uh, Habits, James Clear. Yeah. And that's Atomic great. Habits, it's a great book. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, the mindset that that's the brace of suck is great because when I'm having a bad day, I'm like. This is what it's supposed to feel like because you're doing it as opposed mm -hmm. to sit on the couch. Yeah. And so, um, so I smile every time I think of that. That phrase. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, man. And I also think it's a, it's a good point because like you were saying, you know, embracing the suck, it's different from punishing yourself as well. So I think that's an important thing to realize, like, you know, right. punishing yourself. Oh, you need to push yourself through hell um, is very different to, being like oh yeah well this feels awkward or i feel really bad at this thing but i've never done it before so of course i should feel bad at it because right. i think as you were saying like a lot of the times if you if it feels bad you'll be like i don't want to do that because i i suck like i uh, it's just me but you've kind of just outlined like it's everyone everyone embraces the suck if they haven't done it before because yeah. why would you be good at something if you've never done it before right that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah yeah and then it feels good when you try new things because it's not a, it, you know, I'm starting to lose that expectation that I'm supposed to be great at everything. And so, you know, I try a new movement and I'm like, well, oh, I'm going to be terrible. That's, that's fine. It's going to, but someday I'm going to be great at it. And Love so, it. Uh, so it's fun. It's, it makes it more fun and less of a, you know, I start a workout and I don't have that expectation that I'm going to be really great at this today. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it. And that's yeah. much easier for me. That's it broke down a lot of resistance that I have to just getting off the couch and doing the workout. It's much more enjoyable now. It doesn't feel yeah. like I'm, you know, doing something that's bad. It's hard. It's difficult. So. That's huge, mate. Can, can you like for someone because this is so no, uh, common? So let's just say there's someone listening. Everything they're saying, they're like, "That's me right now." Like I've got loads of resistance to get started. I'm either completely 110% on or completely off the wagon. So yeah. can you give that person a bit of advice? Because I think it's just super, because it's so clear for you now and it's so recent for you as well as it was only a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, it's still, I'm still surprised by it every day. 
Um, for me, I guess it was just a combination of, you know, making the commitment to you that I was going to join the program and, you know, fulfill the minimum expectations. And and the barrier to entry there was, was very small. I mean, the requirements were very easy. The, the movements that I started with were very simple and I got gains from them quickly. You know, within a week or two, I was already feeling better. So for me, that you know, the whole package really worked for me. You know, talking about mindset and me immediately recognizing, oh, that's me, you know, that that uh, self-criticism, you know, that stuff. But the tools were there immediately available. So you know, you were very flexible. I built my own version of the habit tracker and I keep that with me everywhere. Um, and so for every kind of piece of resistance that I had, whether it was, um, you know, self-talk or trying to do movements that were too hard in the past, every piece of that was just easier with what you set up for me. Mm. So... You know, for me, it was just in the for the first month, it was just show up. And that's what I said to myself all the time was just show up and, you know, fulfill whatever is expected today. That was it. And then when I didn't show up, the days that I didn't show up, it was just forgive yourself, move on. It's not that big a deal. You know, do it tomorrow. And that was a big, big one for me as well. You know, when I, yeah. when I was supposed to do 10 reps and I only did six. You know, so what? It's fine. You showed up. You did it. And, yeah, man. You know that's okay. that's huge for me, because um, that was the biggest barrier for me was the self talk. Right? And so, um, you know, hearing other people talk about it on the calls, um, hearing you go over it on the calls, was just very good. It just kind of reintroduced it to me every week. Hmm. And it was, it was good, you know, small results in the beginning and you know, they just continue. So it's that positive kind of feedback loop, mm. which is it's great. Yeah, totally. And like, okay, so so this the same person's listening to you and they're like, yeah, Charles, okay, but like if I do that, it's gonna be I'm gonna be too soft to myself and I'm not gonna do anything. So <laughs> common, common kind of response. So you, you need to be tough on yourself, you know, you need to whip yourself, as my, my good friend says um back yeah. in Ireland so like to someone who has that they're like well if I'm being you know if I'm letting myself off the hook then I won't do anything can you give that person advice <laughs> I'm putting yeah, you on, I, on the spot here I, but I just think you about the same thing I thought the same yeah. thing um yeah it's just it's very liberating to to shift from uh, being self-critical to saying you know it's okay and um and it doesn't end up with that, you know, you feel like you're a failure if you don't do a thousand percent thing, which is what you think it's going to feel like. It doesn't feel like that at all. Um, it's just very liberating. And it actually, once I stopped saying that to myself, um, it just, everything became easier. Um, showing up became easier. And what I found really, that was probably the biggest barrier for me to showing up was that, well, if I don't, do this well, or I don't hit a hundred percent, then that means I'm a failure. So maybe I just don't show up. And so as soon as I started forgiving myself for I show up, do a program and, you know, you might have me on there for, uh, you know, 10 reps, three sets of 10 reps, and I couldn't do all three. Um, but as soon as I said, well, it's okay if you don't do all three, maybe tomorrow you'll get three. Then I could show up tomorrow. I didn't feel bad about not getting it done. And then the, all that resistance was gone. And so instead of having that feeling like, oh, you suck, you didn't do it all. I had that feeling like what I did today was great. Tomorrow, I'll try it again. It's a completely different thing than I thought. Um, and it's very, like I said, it's very liberating. That's the word I would use. Yeah, that's such gold, mate. Like it's, it's probably the number one thing I see with myself and with other people clients and other people out there I talk to is we set the bar so high for ourselves oh yeah and and it's all self-created you know 
Like no one's telling you that you need to do four hours a week from the get go. Otherwise you're a failure. Like it's all of our own doing, which I think is always yeah. funny why we kind of, we, we build this really high wall and we never get over it. So yeah, I think it's just make it so easy. You can say no. Like, I think that's a really important thing as well. And just, if you yeah. just focus on the process of, yeah, the process of, or the habit of showing up weekly and in order to show up every week, it needs to be easy. We're not saying yeah. that like, and you know, Charles, you can, you can tell people now you've done a lot of tough workouts. I'm sure in the last four months and you've pushed yeah. yourself. We've also done a lot of light workouts, depending on how you feel, right? Yep. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it's weird. So some days it's easy, some days it's hard, and it doesn't really matter. You know, the hard days, you do what you can do, and then you move on. And those hard days beat used to beat me. Mm -hmm. You know, I would just struggle and struggle, and then, you know, feel terrible that I didn't do, you know, what I was capable of doing in my head. And I beat myself up about it. Now it doesn't matter. I just, you know, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll go get some steps instead. You know, this is what I'm doing right now. This is feeling great. I'll just go do something else. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very liberating. It's, it's great. It kind of opens the door to, uh, you know, lose those expectations that are just kind of crushing. My self-talk is completely different now. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. And you go from like, you know, doing six to eight, maybe 12 weeks, really intense, and then doing nothing for six to six to 12 months to, to, to training for 12 months, and now 24 months, and then 36 months, and then 48 months. Right. And like, that's when you get results is when you don't stop. I think that's the big thing as well. So yeah, this is gold, mate. I, I love that you're sharing this, um, especially for people listening. I think it's really important to hear it as well, because sometimes you can think that maybe you know, you're the only person with high expectations where it's not, it's not the case. We're all like that. Um, so maybe talk about the, we've talked about training side of things. How about the nutrition side of things, especially like with type two diabetes, it's type two diabetes, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah the, you know, the meal planning tools that I have now are, are something I never ran into before where I could, you know, I could plan out months and months now. And I have a pretty good sort of range of uh, recipes and whatnot. Uh, but I understand what I'm supposed to be consuming from my macros. And it's, you know, I've been through a lot of different diets. I've tried, you know, keto. I've tried Atkins. I've tried no carb, low carb, plant-based, raw, you know, all the different things. And, you know, all of them work to a certain degree, but they're, you know, sometimes they're very, very restrictive. And again, I've never been able to just 100% do them all the time. And that ended up, always ended up with, you know, oh, you failed this diet. And so it all goes to hell. So this, again, that same kind of mindset applied to the diet for me. And, um, and I've been up and down with weight over the last 20 years. I've been pretty steady the last couple of years. So it was something that for me was more of a fine tuning than a huge breakthrough, but it, it did help quite a bit. And it's, I think it was good for me to have one of the pieces uh, sort of okay so that I didn't have to have a, a massive restructuring of how I was eating, um, just kind of having some of the basic guidelines. And um, for me, the big misunderstanding was how much protein I was supposed to be consuming like that mm -hmm. was very helpful and it, it feels great to kind of be at the right macro level can you um, explain that to people where, where were you and, and what was the what did you learn i was yeah so i i learned for for my metabolism for my weight for um, for my level of activity um, i was not consuming enough protein by quite a bit so i try to do um, 40 grams of protein per meal now, which was pretty hard at first. Um, and, you know, but I put in things like uh, a good protein shape. Um, and I've been able to, oh, the other piece is I've been able to, to combine the dieting or the right diet for me 
and intermittent fasting, uh, which is which was difficult. I tried to do it before and I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then I think just because again, when I limit my hours, I didn't consume enough protein. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been a big deal for me. Okay, so are you saying like you find the intermittent fasting beneficial now? Yeah, yeah, and it's very easy. Mm -hmm. very easy. Yeah, because I'm having enough, I think probably because, you know, I've always, I've been eliminating carbs for a long time. Um, but now I'm getting enough protein and, you know, consuming the right kind of carbs that um, I'm not hungry. Mm. I'm, I'm never hungry. You know, even with the fasting, I don't, I don't wake up hungry. I don't go to bed hungry. The fasting is very easy. And my weight's solid right now. I, I yeah. haven't felt better in a long time. So it's very good. My blood sugar's doing great. Um, and, this, and this combination of uh, the right proteins, the right carbs, has been very good for me. Yeah, that's amazing, man. That's really good. Yeah. It's it's kind of, yeah, like you were saying, it's similar. The food side of things is the mindset, all the sustainability is all in there. Same with the training side of things. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great stuff, mate. And yeah, the also just having that plan in place for the meal prep, I think that's an important yeah. thing that, you know, just for people listening as well, like if you can have stuff in the fridge or the freezer, that's somewhat decent, like you're going to eat better food. So that's a big yeah. thing that we focus on as well. Um, can you maybe talk about what do you do now? Because um, everyone uses parts of the program differently, but how do you do your, your meal prep and all that? My meal prep? I um, So I kind of have a loose meal prep. And so I'm at the point now where I've, because I've been doing this for a few months now, that I have a freezer full of all kinds of different meals. And so nice. what I do now is when I, during the week, any day of the week that I feel like cooking, then I'll go grocery shopping. I get enough to make probably three or four meals and I'll eat the one, you know, that I make and then I'll freeze the other three. And so I only have to cook like once a week now. That's awesome. <laughs> so, I love it. so then the rest of the week, you know, whatever Sunday, I'll just look in the freezer and pull out some stuff for, for lunches and dinners for the rest of the week. Let them defrost as the week goes by. Make one meal, and I'll put you know half of that back into the freezer. And so it's just a now it's a continuous cycle of I shop in my freezer. I'm like, well, what do I want to have this week? And I pull out you know chili or tacos or whatever, mm. and then I only have to cook like once, twice a week. It's great. That's awesome, man. I love it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that's so good to hear, my man. Um, let's talk about like recommendations because um for someone listening like it's not for everyone so who would you say is going to be suited to the program and maybe who mightn't be the best person to join the program yeah i mean i have a hard time remembering that i'm in my 50s so i think certainly anybody that has you know chronic pain uh, you know i honestly wish i started this in my 30s um, you know, when I when I had some of these initial issues and I could have learned to move better and, and I'd probably be, you know, pain-free now. Uh, but I, I think anytime you see yourself getting caught up in that cycle of what I'm doing isn't working, I don't I don't feel better uh, when I do a workout kind of thing. I think this program is for you. If you, you know, if any of this stuff sounds uh, familiar, especially the for me, the mindset stuff is the most powerful part of it. Uh, then I think it's for you. Certainly in your 50s, anybody that's in their 50s and doesn't have movement restrictions, you know, that's amazing. But <laughs> I don't know anybody. That you probably don't need the program if you're in your 50s. And that's right. Body. I think everybody, yeah. Yeah. everybody in their 50s should be doing this. If you know, mm -hmm. Awesome. Because um, it's just it's really liberating to be heading in the right direction. You know, I move. I have so much better movement now than I did, you know, six months ago. It's incredible, um, and without pain, you know, without not beating myself up, it doesn't hurt to do the workouts. It's it's awesome. So I, I honestly, I feel like it's for everybody at my age, but I wish I started a while ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, D- Dave, one of the guys in the program, he's in Melbourne. He said the same thing. Where he said, like, oh, I wish I started in my in my twenties, but I I wouldn't have taken my advice yeah. back then. You know, yeah, yeah, That's the yeah for sure. Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Well, look, I really appreciate you sharing. I think. In particular, I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, yeah, that's me. You know, that's I, I'm in that cycle of all in, all out. So, yeah, just again, really appreciate you taking time out of your morning to share your experience so far. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, I just appreciate everything you've done for me. And uh, I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, you're only getting started, my man. So it's very yeah. exciting. Great. Thanks, Connor.